Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mo and today I will be letting you know all the books that I read in the month of September. So the first book that I read was That Time I Got Drunk and Leaded a Love Potion at a Werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. This is the second book in the Mead Mishap series. I did give this book four and a half stars. This is following Cinnamon's best friend from the first book that Cinnamon, her two best friends in this book. So if you remember Brie, someone tried to slip like a love potion into her drink and it was pretty creepy, I will say. I wouldn't say it's completely equivalent to like a roofie for us, but also it is because like they try to take advantage of her and make her vulnerable and fall in love with them. And upon finding this out, she like tries to throw it at the person that like tried to slip it in her drink, but she ends up missing because they duck and then it lands on someone else and then we get our love interest felix and brie they had such really good chemistry i love when one of them is like way more down bad than the other and felix was definitely like he worshipped the ground that brie walked on so if you like characters like that you'll love this book it was completely doting he took care of her every need and their sex was really great and then the next book that i read was that time i got drunk and saved a human also by kimberly lemming this is the final and third book in the mean mishap series i gave this one four stars i won't say much about this one because it kind of like it spoils the rest of the series I feel like so you have to follow the hijinks and like the adventure that goes on in the first two books to get to this one obviously but this is Dante's love story and if you're like getting to know Dante and I think he really shows up I think towards the end of the first book and like he's really like a character in the second book he is very grumpy and this is his love story he is learning to be like compassionate and more fragile with humans because he is a centuries old dragon shifter and he hasn't really had to be around humans because this whole like curse situation that springs up in the first book also his love interest was really that girl like i won't say who it is because yeah i won't say who it is because you have to read the books you have to read the books okay this is such a really fun series and then the next book that i read was the romantic agenda by claire khan i did give this one three stars this is following joy who is an asexual woman that has been in love with her best friend since the beginning of time child she has actually never let him know it's malcolm and joy they've been ace bone coon since like college and they're now maybe early 30s late 20s and they have this really close bond like very close like if you didn't know that they were best friends you would think they were dating type close he invites her on this trip and she thinks like oh he's gonna tell me how he feels and then he ends up bringing her to meet this girl that he's dating that he wants to be make his girlfriend and she's like oh we tell each other everything like i know all of his whereabouts like where this lady come from like why is he waiting to show me something because something in his past with an ex and ex thought that they were dating and left him and blamed it all on both of them and he was just like trying to keep them separated i guess so I'll tell y'all what I enjoyed about it before I really like get into why I really did not like it. I did enjoy reading about asexuality as I haven't really seen a lot of representation in the books on my radar. It showed me that more so that sexuality really is a spectrum and there's not one way to be anything. Finding someone that found like their, their middle ground and figured out what they wanted out of their relationships and their interactions with people was very nice to read about. I felt like I was doing mental gymnastics with Joy and Malcolm for like 80% of the book. The book's like maybe 300 pages, 285, something like that, but it felt like it was like 560 pages. And I said for like 80% of the book, just to feel extremely disappointed in the end, I said if only they learned how to communicate. I literally, as soon as I finished the book, I was like, what the f did I just read? And I had to call my best friend and I'm like, bestie, am I just like emotionally stupid? like i don't understand so i literally relay her all the events of the book and she's like no nah, they're just stupid and don't know how to talk to each other because they're both like described as these like super honest people and super blunt and straightforward but they can't tell the best friend they've had for at least like maybe a decade i want to say that they like each other so i won't say anymore because i was going to tell you guys really the the resolution so whatever and then next i read instructions for dancing by nicola yoon i gave this one four and a half stars we are following evie or evie i've been calling her evie but it's like evie she no longer believes in love after witnessing the dissolution of her own parents relationship and she basically just wants to write it off so she stumbles into this interaction with a stranger and after she comes out of it she gains this power to see couples relationship beginning to end just by watching them kiss this encounter leads her to a dance academy where she meets x they become dance partners for this competition all i will say is through their interactions and they're dancing and they're getting to know each other she starts to wonder if love is worth the risk i definitely did not expect this book to hit so hard like i thought it was going to be literally light and fluffy because it's gorgeous and it looks like any other ya book that i would be interested in right but it left me reeling and thinking about life and look at how tiny this 
book is. If it could have been longer, I don't even, this is like the perfect size. Like I wanted more, but also there's nothing more you could have done with this kind of book. I feel like it was perfect. It was, which now that I'm saying that, shouldn't I have given it a five? No, I think it was because I was upset. Yeah, my emotions went into this rating because it was going to be five stars. It was just very bittersweet and that's why it really wasn't five stars. I don't know how to explain this without telling y'all the story but I really want y'all to read this and let me know what y'all think. It's beautiful and I enjoyed everything about it for the most part. Next, I did read the entire Divergent series and there is a vlog up about that. I feel like everyone knows Veronica Ross Divergent. I did give the first book five stars in the series. In short, if you don't know about this series, this is about, about. <laughs> it is a young adult dystopian book following a society divided by five different factions and a girl who doesn't fit into any of them. Next, I did read Four. It is a short story collection of four different stories following our one of our main characters, Four. He does become important into the series, so I did read it second because technically I'm I think the order that it was published or the order it's supposed to be in in the series is before Divergent, but you don't care about him yet. You don't need to know anything about him really before you get into Divergent, in my opinion. I gave Four four stars. And then the next book in the series, Insurgent, I gave 4.75 stars. And then lastly, Allegiant, I gave four and a half stars. The next book that I read was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, and I gave this 4.75 stars. So this follows Alexis and Daniel that's seemingly like opposites on the outside that don't belong together, but really they're actually perfect for each other in my opinion. Their professions are that he's a carpenter and she is a doctor that comes from wealth and a long lineage of doctors and that's like the like the real big main difference in why they are from different worlds he lives in like a small town and she lives in the city i love daniel so motherfucking bad like i love him so much one thing i will say a man written by a woman is always better than real men in real life i don't make the rules i literally just don't i just read i just read Okay, Daniel literally is, he giving them a run for their money, is what I will say. The absolute only reason that this is not five stars is because constantly, like at least four or five times throughout this whole entire book, Alexis is calling him a baby. Mind you, I believe he's 28 and she's 37. And okay, she had an ex-husband or whatever, and his son was like 26, 27, so she was in the stepmama role. I want to give her that excuse. It's like, okay, he's like the same age as my like old stepson but to call him like a baby and like oh he's just so young every five seconds and then continue to be him like it kind of made me want to stop reading the book because i'm just like okay bitch, is he a baby or is he a grown-ass man that's your fuck which one is it or do you enjoy babies that is actually one of my biggest pet peeves and then also at her big age since she wants to keep bringing up age so bad and she lets her parents dictate her life financially she supports herself and she literally doesn't have to see them like often like i think she goes to like family dinner maybe once a week or once a month i don't really know i didn't really care but it's like okay girl they don't pay for your housing they don't put a roof over your head okay they don't feed you they don't eat your so why the do you care so much they're disappointed because she's not with the ex because he's also a doctor and all this mess y'all and it's just annoying because it's like obviously he hurt her daughter hurt their daughter and they just don't give a f they're like oh you know relationships are all about work and you don't just get into a marriage and then just quit the marriage my heart is broken what the f so yeah 4.75 stars abby has another banger on her hands i then read after that yours truly these are a part of a duology and this is the second one so i would recommend reading in the order i read it because it does talk about alexis alexis and daniel are together in this book so it's just like why would you want to read the other book but i've seen a lot of people read this one first this is like the one that's like really hyped up it's hyped up for a good reason i will say i gave this five stars abby knows how to write a man and make you actually like men also if you haven't seen it i have done a five star predictions vlog and this was in it so the, actually the next three books are that i've read just letting you know if you haven't seen it you should see it it's some of my best work this is following brianna she is alexis's best friend from the first book so again that's why i feel like you should read the first book first because you really get more about who she is as a person before you really get to know her brianna is going through a lot in her life at this current time she's going through a divorce her younger brother's health is declining and also just like her overall dissatisfaction of her life and then in comes jacob you cannot i cannot explain to you how much i love jacob oh yeah they are both er doctors by the way and they both get off on the wrong foot because brianna is in the running for this job promotion and she believes that jacob is as well and Jacob kind of comes off a little rude. He comes off a little rude due to his like clinical anxiety. And Brianna has it in her, in her head that Jacob is 
coming in to steal her job that she wants. Their friendship slowly starts to develop when Jacob writes Brianna a heartfelt letter because he just feels like in person he gets too, you know, into his head and overthinking and he doesn't feel like he's going to communicate well because every time he interacts with her, it, she gets the wrong impression of him every time. So he writes a heartfelt letter and it just starts this whole thing of them corresponding through letters with each other and then eventually they start having lunch together and building a solid friendship. One of the reasons why I feel like a lot of people like this is the anxiety rep. It really makes people feel seen. I loved how Brie met him where he was when it came to his anxiety and I also love how he reassured her and made her feel confident after she went through some really hurtful and traumatic things in her life. I think that they are the most perfect couple that I have read about the most perfect for each other i don't know if this matters to you or not but i cried like four times during this book and i would say on a scale of like one to ten on like ten being like oh i cry all the time and then one being like oh i don't cry at all i, I feel like i'm like a four or five and it also depends on the time of the month to be very honest i have no notes about this book this is a five star read next i read love radio by ebony liddell and i gave this one five stars this is following danielle or danny who is trying to just finish her senior year of high school go off to college in new york and become a successful author just like those that came before her and we also follow prince or dj love jones who plays music and also gives love advice to listeners of a very popular detroit radio show danny grew up in a household where romance is very prevalent and everyone in her house basically is into love and she's just like uh it's kind of like overrated like i don't know i don't know like i just need to get where i'm going and then figure about love later on like this is not a priority and she meets prince and they get up on the wrong foot it's a not so meet cue he basically is like no i think actually she says i'm giving you three dates which proves to me like why i should fall in love with you and they go on these dates and they get to know each other and it's really beautiful. I will warn you, there is a lot of talk about, not a lot, but if you are sensitive to talks about SA, there is some flashbacks that are on page about what happened with, to her. There is also chronic illness representation. Prince's mom has MS. There are 90s and 2000s pop culture references and just who they both wanna be in the world after high school. I think this was an absolutely beautiful love story. I don't have any notes on this one as well. I loved it so much and it's also way too short. And then next I read Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. I gave this one five stars. This was also the last book that was in that vlog that I previously mentioned. Selena Sardothian is an 18 year old assassin that has been in a prison slash slave slash death camp for a year. Most people in this camp only live up to like three or four months if they're lucky and she survived a whole year. After her time at this horrible place, she get summoned to the castle to basically accept a proposition to earn her her freedom. The only thing that she has to do is to beat 23 thieves, killers, warriors to become the king's personal assassin. Light work, no reaction. Light work, no reaction for her, okay? What she has to do is compete in a series of trials with these other competitors and get to the top and win. But also her identity is hidden, so she has to like kind of like sit in the middle of the ranks and slowly work her way up so people don't get suspicious and she doesn't become like a real threat until the end. This is the first book in the Throne of Glass series and I was eating it up. Oh, all I really had to say left was she has two love interests at the moment and one I think is like entirely too soft for her and the other one I've been warned to hate him. So I'm trying to like detach myself and put him at like at least an arm's distance. And then next, I finally got to Twisted Lies by Anna Wong, and I gave it four stars. This is the fourth book in the Twisted series. I think I read Twisted Hate, the third book, like all the way in March of this year. And I really was putting this book off because it follows a group of four friends and Stella is the last friend. That's the main uh, character in this book. She is kind of like a background character in the rest of these books. Like, I don't feel like she was very like a big part of this group. And yeah, I just didn't feel like I was gonna like her story, but actually I liked hers the most. And I will say that I liked this series in descending order. Like this one with four stars, I gave Twisted Hate and Twisted Games 3.75. And then Twisted Love, I gave it three. So Stella is an introverted social media influencer on Instagram and her engagement on her page is getting low. And she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to do to spice up her channel. Her channel. She doesn't know what to do to like really spice up her brand. She has a lot of responsibilities. And at the same time that her engagement is getting lower, she loses her job at this magazine company. Someone suggests, like her, I think her manager suggests that she should get into a relationship to provide engagement. Cause like all the girlies that are like above her, they're all in a relationship and people are eating up the couple page, the couple's pages. And she's like, why do I have to be with a man for people to find me interesting? Like that's so backwards. And I agree but the proof was in the pudding. She got in this fake relationship with Christian Harper and her engagement soared. 
So Christian is kind of like this character that's slowly in all the books, actually, now that I think about it. Because all the men have a connection to him somehow. I think he's uh, into cybersecurity or something. I really, this is like a fever dream. I kind of remember the book, but I also really don't. And he's also like does some like little shady things on the side. He is her landlord and he's been infatuated with her since he met her. He gives her like this low rate of rent and he just always has her around. He keeps an eye on her. He keeps tabs on her. And it's not in a creepy way. And actually, she does have a stalker. This is all over the place because, again, I don't, my thoughts are so jumbled about this book. Because I had a fun time reading it, but also it was just like... Oh, but basically this gets dark because Stella has a stalker. He wasn't really a problem these last two years, but he starts sending her like these crazy messages like, Oh, you better not be with anybody else type shit. Like, it's weird. Um, like, I'm watching you. He's sending her pictures of her like in real time. It's very creepy. And it, it gets darker than that, which I did not expect. Like, I think all of these are supposed to be, like, a little suspenseful. But um, this one was, it really took okay. the Christian's involvement with this is that he helps her out. And she gets the fake dating thing in exchange for, like, helping him out. Because he needs to look more personable when he's, like, help, like talking to investors and other people for his company. Because he's very, like, businessman, very stoic. He doesn't give a f about anybody else. But he has a really, like, soft spot for Stella, which I like. Um, sometimes he got like a little possessive and like alpha man gruff and I didn't enjoy that but it worked for him it doesn't work for everybody I don't I'm not really that's not my favorite like I love like a real like I love a soft boy a lover boy golden retriever cinnamon roll type like I love that that's really all I have to say I give it four stars so the next book that I read was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and I gave this five stars this was really about an Afro-Latina teen finding her voice in a world that really wants her to be quiet and to shut the at just 15 years old, she is subject to older men and boys objectifying her and sexualizing her. And she also has to deal with her overly religious and protective mother and her neglectful father. She feels very, oh, she also has a twin, by the way, but she feels very lost in her experiences and writing her poetry is like her outlet. And I will say, poetry. The one thing I did not know when I opened this book was that it was like in, uh, written in like poetic verse. So I'm going to show you. It's not like a poetry book to where like everything could be connected but different. It's like literally it reads as a story but it's like indifferent. So this is one page. I forgot that I had some quotes so I had to go get my iPad. So she's seeing this, this boy and his name is Amon. When he was younger his father used to take him ice skating and then he got older and he didn't. He grins at me and shrugs. I came here and practiced a lot. Oh they're at an ice skating rink. My pops never wanted me, wanted to put me in classes, said it was too soft. And then she wrote, and now his smile is a little sad. And I think about all the things we could be if we were never told our bodies were not built for them. And I think about all the things we could be if we were never told our bodies were not built for them. And then I did another quote. Let's see. Oh, she's going through something and she's very like numb to the world and sad after something happened. It's, this is the, ugh. okay. I cried like heavily like this was actually like like sometimes whenever I say I cried like I teared up a little bit and like one lone tear traveled down my face I wiped away like four times like it was fully in my face and I couldn't read I couldn't see so that's what happened in this poet x I don't hear teachers or father Sean twin or caridad Aman tries to speak to me but even in bio I pretend my ears are cotton filled I speak to no one the world is almost peaceful when you stop trying to understand it and it's like ah, so sad a 15 year old feeling like hopeless and just like dejected i didn't know that it was going to be written in like poetic verse but where i thought i literally opened the page and i was like you're joking it really enhanced my reading experience and i will say the ending was a little bit like wrapped up quick and a little too neatly for me because with the progression of the book she's having like all this like tumultuous relationship with her family and then in the end it's like they all kind of like flip a switch and kind of get their act together a little bit i would like to see them all in therapy and working through this together i don't want it to just be like you know, we got like this whole buildup is my thing. Yeah, we got this whole buildup and then at the end it just like dissipated. I'm, I'm repeating what I said, but I just wanted to see their changes slowly incorporated instead of just given to us. I don't know how else to say that. The next book that I read was The Last Story of Mina Lee by Nancy Junyeon Kim. And I gave this one three and a half stars. There's a video before this one. It is called my, I read the highest and lowest rated books on my TBR. And this was the lowest rated book, content warning for, um, suicidal ideation and there's just really sad things in here just a lot of abuse and all kinds of things the center of the story Mina Lee she is found in her apartment dead by her daughter Margot finding no answers or help in her mother's case she decides to start her own investigation to figure out why she died and 
what happened i did explain more in my video but i kind of was a little disappointed in the way this was in this ended mainly because i did focus on how her mom died i wasn't i think the point was to actually sit and digest mina's life story but i was kind of just like okay okay she died though like lastly all i will say was mina's story was very important and i'm glad that margot got to see a little bit of her mom but unfortunately she had to see that even though her mom was gone yeah three and a half stars and then next i read the love songs of web dubois or dubois i like saying it i think french is how you say the dubois part by honore fanon jeffers i gave this one five stars this is an epic that closely follows ailey pearl garland and all of her ancestors from before slavery it deals with uncovering truths behind her black indigenous and white heritage trauma child abuse it is mostly sexual colorism racism slavery oppression resilience and a lot more personally i like to read happier black books and this left me pretty down but also wanting to know who all i came from i did love that there were older generations equipping individuals with the tools that they had instead of just judging and leaving them lost. Ailey always had something, someone in her corner, even when things were going really bad in her life, that a lot of her ancestors didn't have the privilege of, unfortunately. Also, I haven't studied a lot of W.E.B. Dubois' work, so it was very interesting to me because every song or part in the book, it had like a little quote or a passage in from one of his works. As of right now, I'm only reading for like escapism, and this was not that kind of book. So if that's what you're looking for, I wouldn't recommend this book. It is very heavy and it gets very dark. There is little splashings of happiness and joy and love, but there's just an overall dark tone to this for me. Especially when you know the history of indigenous and black people, it's insane. Anna Ray really wrote this beautifully. It was in like, it went back and forth from present time to back in the day. I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, five stars. The last book that I read was Yinka, Where's Your Husband? by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn, and I gave this one four stars. Yinka's mama and aunties are constantly harassing her about finding a husband. She is, I think she's 31. She is content on waiting for the one until her cousin gets engaged and she needs to find a date to the wedding. For a hot second, this was teetering between 3.75 and four stars due to the simple fact that Yinka was annoying initially she's confident in not having a partner then she gets so wrapped up in finding a man that she loses herself to the point that her friends intervene and suggest that she seek therapy i will slightly excuse her antics as they are rooted in her lower self-esteem and the role that colorism and desirability have played in her life because she is a darker slender black woman she's been bullied before and made to feel less than beautiful so she's dealing with a lot of that and getting back to herself but I just don't like the switch that happened because at the beginning she was just like, I don't need no man. Like, and then it was just like, oh, I need a man, I need a man. Like she was getting desperate. She was doing things she never did before. And she was becoming someone that people in her life that love her close to her didn't recognize her anymore. So it was, it was very bad. And I didn't really care for the ending. Yeah, the transition in Yinka was, was not fun. Those were all the books that I read in the month of September. I really had, I think I had a decent reading month i'm really excited for y'all to see october though let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite and your least favorite read of september and i'll see y'all in the next one bye